now time for member statements, and I recognize the member from Stormont, Dundas, South Glendale. Mr. Speaker, today I want to highlight the importance of volunteers. I recently attended a couple of fundraisers in my riding to raise money for important causes. I attended the second annual Dairy Cares event where local dairy farmers, stakeholders, and agribusinesses across SDNG came together to celebrate and thank our local three hospitals. The Cornwall Community Hospital, the Winchester District Memorial Hospital, and the Glengarry District Memorial Hospital. This year, the event raised over $234,000 for these three hospitals. I participated in a fashion show for the House of Lazarus in cooperation with St. James Anglican Church that raised over $10,000 for the organization. They operate a warming hub where the community can access a shower, laundry services, a bed, breakfast, and lunch once a week, and also get legal advice and get advice from a nurse practitioner at no cost. I also visited the St. Vincent de Paul Food Bank, followed by a volunteer appreciation luncheon at the Royal Canadian Legion across the street. Speaker, volunteers are essential to the functioning of many organizations and communities. Volunteers contribute their time, skills, passion, and love and are driven by a desire to make a positive impact without expecting monetary compensation. They bring billions of dollars to the economy by volunteering their time at local events and charities. Their unpaid contributions have a significant economic impact through cost savings and enhanced community well-being. Volunteers play a crucial role and are the heart of a strong, tight-knit communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you. Private for-profit agencies in healthcare cost our province nearly $1 billion last year. That's the reality of how broken our health care system has become under this Conservative government. As we watch the government take frontline health care workers to court to suppress their wages, it's not hard to imagine why this province is struggling to find and retain staff. In Niagara, we learned that these costs have exploded. After attempts to get the information directly from Niagara Health, we learned the details of nursing agencies' costs through our legislative library research team. In 2019-2020, Niagara Health spent approximately $1,400 on nursing agency staff. In 2023, Niagara Health spent approximately $2 million on agency nurses. That's a drastic change in only a few years. Niagara Health reported a $12 million deficit last year. The government must invest in stabilizing staff recruit full-time staff, and we must all fight the privatization of our health care system. Private for-profit health care services will further reduce staffing resources and cost Ontarians more and maybe even their lives. Let's invest in frontline staff, respect our health care workers' support, support publicly funded, publicly delivered, not-for-profit health care in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. After a lengthy battle with the federal government over environmental assessments, we're finally one step closer to getting it done and building the much needed Highway 413. Yeah. Speaker, Halton, Peel, and York regions are all set to grow at an incredible speed. Our government's saying yes to building the roads and highways that'll keep our continues thriving and uh, our, continue, our communities thriving and moving. We see firsthand the frustrations of individuals struggling to make it home to see their family or missing important moments while stuck in congestion. With gridlock costing our economy over $11 billion every year, Speaker, it's never been more important to build this new highway. Highway 413 will save drivers up to 30 minutes each way on their commute, and that's one hour per day and five hours per week in people's schedules. The relief will be the difference between sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic and spending quality time with your family and your loved ones at home. In addition to reducing time on the roads for drivers, Highway 413s will link growing regions, enhance accessibility to housing and employment opportunities, and attract the future of the automotive industry here in Ontario. Our government, under Premier Ford's leadership, is committed to getting it done, and in the coming months, we'll continue to move ahead and get shovels in the ground as a part of our plan to build Ontario by expanding highways and public transit to fight congestion, create jobs, and prepare for the ma massive population growth that's coming in the next 30 years. Thank you, Speaker. We're getting it done. We're building Highway 413. Thank you very much. Member statements. 
The member for Spadina Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on Saturday, I was at the Earth Day cleanup at Liberty Village, and I was talking to a couple, and they had a little three-year-old girl. And I said to the three-year-old girl, I said, hey, you've got a firefighter's hat on, and there's a fire truck over there. Is that your fire truck? And she looked at me, and she looked at the fire truck, and then she said, yeah. <laughs> I want to thank the Liberty Village Residents Association, TPS uh, Division 14, and the firefighters for coming out and cleaning up Liberty Village. I also want to thank the St. Lawrence Neighborhood Association and Friends of Bursey Park, the Garment District Neighborhood Association, the Waterfront VIA, the Toronto Island Shore Cleanup, and A Greener Future for organizing cleanups, Earth Day cleanups across Spadina, Fort York. You've made our riding a little bit greener and a little bit cleaner over the weekend. I also want to note that on Earth Day, Ontario Place for All released a study that showed that the mega spa on the waterfront is estimated to emit 100,000 tonnes of carbon, and a similar thermos spa in Manchester is estimated to consume the same amount of gas per hour as 3,000 homes in a year, the same amount of electricity per hour as 7,000 homes in a year, the same amount of water per day as 5,000 homes in a year. As we enter this climate emergency, building a tax-subsidized giant glass dome mega spa on a bird migration route without an environmental assessment is an environmental, uh, environmental disaster. So we are asking the government, in the spirit of Earth Day, cancel the mega spa on the waterfront. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, today, April 24, Armenians in Ontario, in Canada, and all over the world will observe the 109th anniversary of the Armenian genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire. On the night of April 24, 1915, the Ottoman authorities gathered Armenian intellectuals, members of the parliament, clergy, teachers, writers, civic and political leaders, and marched them to the concentration camp for slaughter. The Armenian genocide claimed the lives of one and a half million Armenians and over one million Greeks. Among the victims were my great-grandparents on my Armenian grandfather's side and my maternal gra Greek grandmother's side. Who would have thought that one day the grandson of the survivors of two genocides will be serving as Canadian citizenship judge and be elected to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. This is the promise of Canada to the persecuted people of the world. In March 1980, the Legislative Assembly of Ontario recognized the Armenian Genocide. On April 24, 1986, the Premier of Ontario declared April 24 as Armenian Memorial Day in Ontario. Finally, in his annual commemoration statement, Premier Doug Ford stated, quote, today we remember the strength and the bravery of the Armenian people and honor the memory of those who perished during this dark chapter in human history. In remembering, we ensure that the present and the future generations reject hatred, intolerance, and injustice in all of its forms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Last Friday, my riding, my team and I lost a good friend, Mr. Don Morey. Don advocated for workers' rights before and after his retirement from the United Food and Commercial Workers Union. Don strongly believe in the NDP as the best choice for the working people of Ontario. Don was the president of the NDP Nickel Belt Riding Association in 2007 when I was first elected and he continued as my president until 2015. We called him best pres ever. Due to his constant involvement when and wherever he could help, whether it was putting up signs, bringing t-shirts, hats, snacks, tools, whatever was needed, Don was always happy to help. He also helped support my predecessor, Mrs. Shelley Martel, while she was in office. 
During the last election, he was really active with my team, pointing out all of the sign location where NDPs have put up sign, you know the size of it, the locations of it. He would grab the sledgehammer and start nailing the sign just like he had done for the last five decades. But that was against his wife's instruction. There was supposed to be no sledgehammer for Don because he was 81 years old at the time. Don leaves behind his smiling wife, Diane, two sons and three grandkids. He was extremely proud of his family and what they have achieved. Thank you for sharing Don with us. We've learned so much from him, and I can assure you that his lesson will not be forgotten. I will miss you, Don. Member Statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the great pleasure to announce our government is investing $47.2 million to build two new elementary schools in my riding of Thornhill. I know. This, these schools are going to be built in an area known in the, as the VMC, uh, also known as the Vaughan Metropolitan Centre. This is the fastest growing community, the VMC. Two new schools, Catholic, public, one roof, creating 1,134 new student spaces and 49 new childcare spaces. This new emerging area is a transit community linked with easy access to the GTA, a vibrant area that's already home to a beautiful YMCA, a library, and so many local businesses. This school will be a much needed and strong addition for the families in the VMC, no doubt. And as a mother who's also sat on school council for so many years, uh, I know how important, how firsthand it is important to have a solid education, including back to basics, hands-on learning, including STEM, and after-school activities. Have all of this closer to home. And this is part of our government's plan to support the new school construction and expansion to existing schools, including childcare spaces. Our new school strategy uh, involves prioritizing shovel-ready projects, working with school boards to speed up construction through design standardization. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Minister of Education for his leadership on this project, and I will continue to work alongside my community partners and government to support these critical investments for our children's future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Order? Order? Member statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And uh, we all know the world is a crazy place right now. And we all know in our communities we've seen the rise of anti Semitism, Islamophobia, and all forms of hate. And we also know in our communities there are people trying to build bridges. So last week, when all four party leaders agreed that allowing the kafia was a good thing in this legislature, that was building a bridge. That was rare. It was unanimity. And when we couldn't achieve that in here, I heard from thousands of people, thousands of people who were disappointed, discouraged, some of them hurt. And I also said to a colleague here who felt the same way last week, I said, don't worry, it'll be fixed by Monday. It's Wednesday. It's not fixed. Our job is to bring people together here, is to be leaders, right? is to build bridges. And I think it's important that we do that. And I would like all of my colleagues to consider just how important that is in each and every one of our communities. And I encourage the government to bring forward a substantive motion in that regard. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. The, the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network is at Queen's Park this afternoon for its annual reception. The network provides those faced with a cancer diagnosis and 
their family members and friends with educational tools, and a place to have their voices heard in planning and implementing treatment. It's a collaborative effort, Speaker, involving a range of community partners all working together to promote the very best standard of care and support. At the reception, I'm going to share information about the Cancer Treatment Centre at Lakeford, Shelton, Oshawa, and programs and services provided by Hearth Place Cancer Support Centre in Durham Region. Speaker, as reluctant as I was in 2006, prior to the municipal election, and to some extent now to speak about my cancer diagnosis and subsequent recovery, I do so this morning to emphasize the importance of the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network to the lives of so many in Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham and thousands of other people across Ontario. To my colleagues here this morning, please join me at this reception to learn more about cancer care. Thank you very much. Members' statements. Oh, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we come together to recognize the Autism Awareness Month, I am compelled to share the profound impact of our recent attendance at the opening ceremony. It was a poignant reminder of the importance of raising awareness and fostering support for the individuals on the autism spectrum. In reflecting on this event, I cannot help but draw from my own personal experiences. Before assuming my role as MPP for Richmond Hill, I have the privilege of serving special needs children within my community. I vividly recall the early years when I nurtured these young minds as they embarked on their journey, often starting at the age of five or six. Today, as they stand on the threshold of adolescence, I am humbled by the progress that they've made and the individuals that they have become. Our commitment to autism awareness is not merely a gesture. It is a testament to our culture and collective responsibility to foster understanding and inclusivity. Let us continue to champion the initiatives that celebrate and ensure the very individual has the opportunity to thrive. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.